Hey everybody, what's up? Startup Survival here, and I'm back with another knife review. Today I'm going to be talking about the K-Bar Dozier. Um, this is a knife that I have never owned, actually. It's on loan to me right now. And um, I was just never that interested in it, but uh, since it's in my possession right now, I've been looking at it and kind of playing with it, and I've uh, kind of changed my opinion a little bit. Uh, I think it's a nice little knife. Uh, I first referred to it in another video uh, called like garbage knives or knives or beater knives, knives that suck or something along those lines. Um, and it was just a knife that at the time I kind of said to myself like, why would I ever buy that? I mean, it's sort of like a, a cheap imitation of the Delica or something like that. Uh, I don't know, I just didn't see a lot of value in it at the time, but um, after handling it a little bit, I kind of see some more positives. So let's get into those right now. So first off, uh, let's talk about the size. I, uh, it's like a three inch blade. Uh, and obviously it's a pure EDC knife. Uh, it's extremely lightweight uh, because there's no steel liners at all inside that handle. Uh, so it weighs in at around two to two ounces, 2.3 ounces, something like that. Um, the, the good things about it are, of course, uh, it opens very fast and very smoothly with that thumb stud there. Uh, what I don't like is that the thumb stud's only on one side. Uh, I suspect you can reverse it because it looks like there's a torque screw in there. Um, but I kind of like the thumb studs to be completely uh, ambidextrous, a la Benchmade Axis Lock. But uh, that's okay. For, for the cost of this knife, I'm willing to overlook a few things, I would say. Um, you know, it's got a black blade on there with, uh, I believe that's a hollow grind. It's definitely not a full flat grind. Uh, and, and I imagine this would be quite a good slicer for EDC tasks. That Aus 8 blade steel, uh, I really like it. I've had a number of knives with that steel. Uh, from Cold Steel, SOG, um, you know, and a few other companies. And I like Aus 8, uh, no problem with that whatsoever. Again, especially for the price. Uh, that black uh, finish there is gonna wear off with time. And I will show you what it looks like after, after it's been used a little bit here. I don't think either of these knives, I think this one's brand new, and I think this one probably hasn't been used a ton, but uh, enough to sort of try it out and see how it works. So uh, another thing that you'll notice right now is, of course, the color variations, right? You have a coyote handle here with a black blade. Um, I think they all have black blades. I might be off on that. I haven't looked at like everything, but from what I've seen online, uh, no, it looks like they do have a satin finish one. I got the I got a website up here, uh, but most of them seem to be black blades. Um, and it looks like some of them actually have spider holes or sort of like an oval instead of the thumb stud there. I don't know if that would be a better way to, to deploy or not. Oh, and they've got a different blade shape as well. Uh, it looks sort of like a draw point or a clip blade a little bit. Um, so that's another thing I was going to say is um, it's a spear point blade. Uh, I've only ever had, I think, one spear point um, knife, and that was the Kershaw Skyline. Uh, and I didn't mind that blade shape at the time. It was okay, but I do prefer um, like a clip point or even, I don't know if you call this a draw point or a leaf uh, leaf shape from Spyderco, but uh, either of those I prefer for sure. And uh, you know, the Delica I just think is perfection. That's one of my favorite blade shapes of all time. So uh, spear point is definitely not my favorite. If you look at the tip there, compared to the Delica, you can see that this is much more obtuse tip, so it's not gonna pierce as well, I'm assuming. Um, but it's got, I'd say this has more belly though for slicing, for sort of like rolling the blade over things like that. Um, this, this seems to have a bit more of a belly. Um, you know, and also, I mean, while we're on the subject here, I've got a few knives in front of you here. I'll zoom out so you can see them all. Um, you know, this knife costs less than every single knife on the table so far. Um, and, and that's pretty remarkable. Uh, can you really say that uh, a Delica, which costs uh, where I am now $75, something like that, is it really three or four times the knife that this K-Bar Dozier is? I'm not too sure about that. <clears throat> um, so I mean, the price is one really, really excellent thing about that knife. Um, so incidentally, the price is where I am. Uh, I found it for about $25. That's pretty good. Um, before I leave, I should talk about this pocket clip and, and then the locking mechanism as well. Um, so all the hardware looks to be black on this, so it's a nice finish actually. Um, you know, everything is, uh, in terms of fit and finish for what it is, I think this is a pretty nice little knife. Um, you know, the pocket clip is uh, tip up only, and I think that's fine. That's definitely the orientation I prefer to carry in. Uh, and I believe it's swappable from one side to the other. So I think you can do tip up left or right, but no tip down because uh, that's the pivot and it's just, it's not gonna, it's not gonna fit the clip. 
Um, the other thing I was going to say is backlock or, or midlock. I'm not sure what you would call this one. I think this is a backlock, but anyways, um, uh, I really like that locking mechanism. Uh, I think it's very strong, very trustworthy. Um, it's you know similar to the triad lock. It's uh, identical to the Delica lock. And both of those I really like because they're truly ambidextrous. Uh, so you can switch this and, and it works just as well in the left hand as the right. Uh, the only problem is of course that thumb stud which like I said it's reversible. So I think you could set this up to be a pretty decent lefty knife. Um, the variations I think are pretty cool. Um, you know, there's some different handle colors out there. Some of them are really, really uh, sort of like loud colors, like zombie green and uh, and orange, like you see on the table here. But uh, I think it's cool to have a knife with varying colors because it promotes collectability. And with such a cheap knife, $25, uh, you could very easily have a K-Bar Dozier collection. Uh, here's one more knife that I just want to throw in there to, to show you. Uh, that is the Bird Meadowlark. I think that fills a similar kind of role. It's in that $20 range. It's obviously a pure EDC knife, um, sort of a cheaper blade steel, but uh, still a quality knife. So I think those two knives stack up pretty nicely against each other. Um, if I had to choose between those, I don't know. That's a tough choice, actually. I kind of like Aus 8 a little better than 8CR13 MOV. Um, also, country manufacturer, Taiwan, uh, China. So Taiwan knives, in my experience, have been great. Uh, here's another one here, the, the Medium Voyager. Love it. Um, and I guess I think I do like Aus 8 better than uh, 8CR13 MOV. Uh, I think that's pretty much all there is to it. I like the country that makes it better, and I, I just think it's a better steel. Anyways, uh, thank you very much for watching. And, uh, you know, if you're on the fence about the K-Bar Dozier, go ahead and do it. It's not going to break the bank, and I think uh, most people really enjoy this little knife. All the best.